Hi guys, it's find of the month time again, and this is a beauty. Uh, this is one of the best binnacles that we've ever had. Um, and for those of you that don't know, a ship's binnacle is the, the, uh, the housing and the support for the main compass on board the vessel. And uh, the, the helmsman would be with the wheel around about here and, and uh, gazing through this beautiful elliptical window at the card on the compass and steering the vessel in the right course. So this, what's most exciting about this particular one is that it's identical to one of the, the binnacles used on, on the Terra Nova, Captain Scott's vessel, um, which was a beautiful 1880s steam whaler. And it's, uh, the, the giveaway for it being an early binnacle is the, uh, the, <laughs> this gorgeous mushroom hood uh, that were made like that to accommodate two oil burners that illuminated the card at night time. Both complete, both signed. And uh, during the day, the brass cover would be removed to reveal the, this lovely beveled glass window, which of course would illuminate the card from above. So Kelvin and White Limited made the very best binnacles at the time. They were like the Rolls Royce of binnacle makers, and not only did they make them for the finest steam whalers and that type of ship, but they also made the, the binnacle for the Victoria and Albert yacht. So we're talking the best of the best. Uh, and you can see proof of how proud they were of this particular piece because there's signatures everywhere you look on it. So starting at the base is the first part of the two-part compensating system. In there, in those holes, would be slotted uh, magnetic tubes, uh, which would help, which work, would work alongside these corrective iron spheres on either side of the magnetic compass. For ships that were made and built with a lot of steel work, these were important to compensate for the steel work and keep the, the compass, the magnetic compass, true. A compass adjuster would come on board before she left port and with a rowing boat or a tug at each end, they'd swing the vessel and make sure that the compass was reading completely true. The front of the binnacle has a inclinometer, which uh, shows the list of the vessel. When they're loading the ship, it's very important that they leave port completely even. So that would show the, uh, show the list of the ship. So let me get to the best bit. Let me take off this lovely hood. To reveal the five inch compass card inside. This is quite a petite binnacle, so the compass is, is also quite small, but it's completely original. And again, another indicator of its age is the the fact that it's called a dry card compass. It's a dry card compass, which is a paper card suspended by string. Again, signatures all over the place on the card there and in the base of the compass bowl there, which is a, a copper bowl. Uh, twisted brass gimbal suspended by grommets. Again, which keeps the compass even in all weathers. And uh, the, the lovely tucked in, tucked in waist, again, a sign of quality and a sign of its 150 years of age. So that's the short version. There's, a, there's an enormous more, amount more to say about this beautiful piece. And uh, it'll go on the website in probably a week from now, just as we finish the last little bits of restoration. Uh, and in, in, in that case, in which case you'll, you'll see the full write-up with some uh, lovely black and white photos that we've found in our research and uh, showing, showing you vessels that had this type of binnacle on board. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for the website and our social media and we'll announce its arrival to the website with its price and the opportunity to purchase and all the history that goes with it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, enjoying it as much as, as much as much as I do. I love it. <laughs>